And so here you are at Carver Academy. I want to talk about Carver Academy for a second because I really get the sense that you're preparing future midshipmen for the Naval Academy. <laughs> <laughs> not West Coast, <laughs> not Air Force. <laughs> Just the name of the guy. Oh, well, but, uh, let's well, talk about Carver Academy for a second. What are you seeking to achieve, and what kind of young people are you trying to prepare for life here? Well, you're not far off. I'll tell you the truth, Byron. You know, we, that's where I get my, my inspiration from. When, when, I, when I sat down to say, how do I want to educate kids? Because um, I'm a teacher at heart anyway. I think that's, that's my makeup. I, I love to, and my kids will tell you, that I'll drive them crazy explaining things. They'll say, <laughs> could you understand why that's happening? Yeah, Dad, you've told us 10 times. <laughs> and so that's, that's where my heart is. And so when I, when I sat down and said, how do I impact education here in San Antonio? I said, well, let me base it on my experience. And my experience was discipline, um, you know, great structure, high expectations, and a high degree of service, a high sense of service. And, and so that's what this Carver Academy was really based on. It's built on it. Even at four and five years old, we're starting them off and saying, you need to understand Everything you do is about service. There's a, there's a quote by George Washington Carver we have over here that says, uh, it, it doesn't matter how tall a man is, how wealthy he is, uh, or what kind of car he drives, it is simply service that will measure his success. And, and that's, the goal, that's the goal that we have for these kids to understand. You're gonna have great success. We're gonna prepare you. Don't worry about being successful. Worry about how you're going to use that success to impact other people's lives. And, and that message does grow in these children. And by the time they're in sixth grade, they're, they're looking at their classmates. They're looking at their community and saying, I need to get out there. I need to be a leader. I need to find out what's going on. I need to help them. Um, you know, one of, our, one of our big things in chapel here is that a, a biblical leader, he listens, he responds, and he supports others. And so even in the sixth grade, our kids understand that very clearly. Mm -hmm. You know, you listen, respond, and support. And, and so those are, those are all things I learned at the academy. It's, it's just entirely shaped my perspective of leadership and my perspective of, of what we should expect from our next generation. And, and obviously we have a problem. Our education system's failing us. Um, we have too many children out there that don't have motivation, they don't have integrity, um, they don't have vision. And, and so in my little way, you know, I've taken a small group of these kids and, and I said, well, when you leave here, you will have all three of those things and you will have them in spades. And so um, we, we've fortunately been able to do that fairly well over the last 11 years. Right. Well, you know, we talk about moral, mental, physical mission at the Naval Academy. Mm -hmm. Not one out of three or two out of three, all three. As you know. Absolutely. Uh, so, Soup, I'd just like to, again, chat about your views as Soup after 18 months. We talk about the moral mission of the Naval Academy. You've certainly been a leader of men and women around the world, and you fought in combat. What's your, what's your sense today of the type of young people we're getting and the ability to ensure that the Naval Academy uh, maintains the highest standards and the moral ethical mission of what, what we try to do? Well, and as David put it, and of course we frequently refer to it as covenant leadership, but it's, mm. uh, and you look at what Carver Academy, the, the, the fundamental precept, uh, precepts here, the same things apply at the Naval Academy. And, and as I look at where our current class is, 2015, and we're building the, uh, and making offers for the class of 2016 right now, what we see is an increasing dedication uh, of our young people to want to serve. Now, admittedly, it's a it's a narrow segment of America of the American public, and that's you know that's a that's a debate for another day. But but there are uh, but of those that really find this uh, that that hear this call to service, and it might be a distant trumpet for some. Uh, but what I see certainly in the class of 2015, the highest. It, metrically, they have the highest grades, mm. they have the highest SATs, they have the greatest amount of community participation. They bring languages and debate and drama and religious activities. They're frequently, you know, from uh, products of a, of a broken home. Mm. And you think about the challenges that so many of us didn't, I mean, that, that wasn't my experience. I had a mom and a dad and they were always there and they were sometimes kicking my rear to mm -hmm. make sure I was doing the right thing. Right. And, uh, and, and I think about how different it would be to not be in that position. And yet, what, what we have been successful in attracting, and this year, uh, another record, I'll call it a bumper crop, uh, already over 20,000 applicants for the United mm. States Naval Academy, a record by any standard. Wow. And of those, when you look at, the, they we're just gonna take the creme de, de la creme there. Uh, this, for me, portends great things for the future of the Navy, the Marine Corps, and of the nation, because they are really smart, they're really dedicated, 
and they get it in such a way, it's, it's in so many dimensions, better than I did when I was their age. Yeah, no, there's no question about that. So, you know, David, we talked earlier about when you can reach young people to really impact this issue of the moral compass. Yeah. Uh, you've got the Carver Code just behind us, and, and, and it's there because I want our alumni to know what it represents to the young people you're exposing here in, in the community of San Antonio. Can you talk about the Carver Code and, and what it is you're seeking to achieve with these young people and why you chose K-6 to as your focus? Well, well there are our pillars, we have six pillars, leadership, initiative, integrity, faith, service, and discipline. And, you know, for our kids, we, they need to understand without any of these pillars, you will not be successful. You'll not be successful by the right standards. The world may say you can have a couple of them and be successful, but the truth is you need all of them. And, and so we, we start off and we, all, we base them in scripture because that's something in our minds, it doesn't change, always gonna be the same. Uh, so, so we're planting those seeds that hey, leadership is, is an important factor, um, service, you know, you've got to understand that your whole measure, the measure of your worth, the legacy that you leave is going to be measured by your service. That's it. Uh, the rest of the stuff is going to fade away, but, but your service will be the sum value of what you've contributed on this earth during your time. So, it, but even at this young age, you'd be surprised how well these kids grasp that and the habits that are formed at this early age. And so we, we, we hold our pillars dear and you know I, naval academy has you know their, their, our code but you know here we've we've mimicked that somewhat because i, I think it is important to have a code mm -hmm. and to have a code that will sustain you for the rest of your life uh so we, we we've been thrilled with it um We've seen the results of it. We've seen kids walking out of here at sixth grade, and we say, what is initiative? Sir, initiative is, is, is not waiting for the next person to do it, but to do it ourselves. And, um, and we say, well, what is integrity? Integrity is doing what you say you're going to do mm -hmm. when nobody is watching. And so, you know, those are simple explanations, but <laughs> they go a long way. You know, it's something they will never forget. And I, by the time you're in fifth grade, You've pretty much formed your personality. You've pretty much formed the thoughts that you're going to have um, till you're 30 and beyond. So we know this is a key time, and, and we're we're creating. I know as a as an athlete, I come into the NBA with certain thoughts and ideas, or I go to an, into a business and I'm thinking um, how I'm going to be successful. Well, it, it matters what I think about service. It matters what I think about faith. It matters how I see initiative and integrity. Um, those things are severely lacking in the business world today. Um, we've created situations for ourselves, incredible deficits. <laughs> you know, that's not character. Yeah. That's not what this country is about. And, and so I, I'm just proud that we can, you know, begin to get back to some of those basic principles. We can model them for these children, right. key, and, and then they can follow. Right. Talk to us about why you named it Carver Academy. I think it'd be interesting yeah. for our alumni to know that. Uh, hey, great. You know, George Washington Carver. How, how can you not? Uh, I mean, he's, he's such an incredible uh, example for us. And, you know, his whole life, he, he, he was a slave growing up. So until the time he was 12, had no books. A, a, di a dictionary was the only book he had. And, um, and you know, so he's it's, it's a great example for us in a lot of ways. And number one is to show these kids, I don't care what your background is, I don't care where you come from, you can't tell me you have a worse situation than he had as a kid. Right. So, you know, you've got all the tools you need to be successful. God has given you everything you need. Start right where you are, use what you have, and make something of it. And just never be satisfied, just keep pressing. And, and those, those values, those, those ideas really stick with the kids. They understand that. Right. Um, so Carver, you know, is a great example because he spends his life trying to improve the lives of, of African Americans in the South. He knew the plight. Cotton was the major crop during that time, um, but it depleted all of the nitrogen out of the land, and the land was was getting um, useless. And and so he he said, okay, well let's plant peanuts, let's plant sweet potatoes. That's going to replenish the nitrogen. It's going to it's going to keep the land going. But uh, but the cotton, you know, it was a it was a cash crop, and you know, there there was no way they were going to make those changes unless there was some value in the peanut, there was some value in the sweet potato, and so uh, for him to give his life and to serve, it, he had opportunities to go make money, go go do plenty of different things. So in so many ways, I, I can't even begin to describe you know his impact in our society today, but. 
that example that he set is the perfect example for the d demographic that we deal with here at the Carver Academy. Uh, and, and if he can be successful, I promise you every student we have in this school should be successful. That's fantastic. Well, I think that's great for all of our alumni, but particularly our young people to know about mm. it because it turns out history is pretty important. You know? <laughs> yes. If we don't learn from history, we're pretty much uh, in, in some serious trouble. Uh, Soup, you've been on board 18 months speaking of history. You, know, you now are the leader of uh, an institution that has 166 years of tradition and running. Oh. Um, what's your sense today, speaking of that tradition, of the challenges for our Naval Academy as you, as you see it on your watch and as we move forward? What would you say the biggest challenges are and what you hope to achieve as part of that process? Well, I, I think that I have been blessed uh, and David and, and, and you and I shared this a little bit earlier, but you know, you talk about the shoulders of the giants that you stand upon. And the Academy in these past 166 plus years has built a foundation of excellence that, that we have inherited. Quite frankly, it was given to us. It, mm -hmm. I mean, we just, when, when we were given our appointment to the Academy, we didn't fully appreciate, certainly I didn't, mm -hmm. you know, all that that would portend. Uh, and, and we live in a blessed time in the sense that America really appreciates the, their service members and uh, in, a, in a way that is, is, is perhaps more profound than what I have seen in, in my previous three decades plus of service. Uh, but this wave of patriotism at some point in time will, I, I believe, will start to subside. It has in the past. It's not to say that there's anything wrong with the American uh, psyche or the American way of life, but, but it's, just a, it's just a matter of course. But what I believe is that as, as we enjoy this, this underlying support of, of the, the American citizenry, the Congress, uh, certainly the, the, uh, the Department of Defense values the service academies, and they look to alumni just like David to say, hey, you know, this is, this is what the schools are capable of producing. Mm -hmm. uh, is this not a worthwhile investment? And so I believe we're, we're riding this wave, and I talk a lot, you know, all aviators, you gotta talk about <laughs> yeah. But, you know, we're, this trajectory that puts us, no school that's successful should be satisfied with the status quo. Right. You have to constantly reinvent yourself. And so that in every way that you can, you, you look to see how do we give them the, the most useful tools for the future. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's really the direction I see us heading. And, and, and thanks to the generosity of, our, of, of the foundation, Myron, and to certainly to alumni, uh, David, your, yourself as, as one of the leaders, it makes all the difference in the world as we take the academy to the next level. And we, and that's reflected. Uh, I mean, we have the uh, Stockdale Center for Ethical Leadership. Yep. It's mm -hmm. a cornerstone, and quite frankly, a gemstone in the constellation of leadership schooling that's available throughout the military. You look at our academics, and we're we've added cyber to the curriculum. Uh, I'm absolutely convinced that cyber will be the first wave of whatever the coming conflicts will be. And to help teach that, we've added some of the best and brightest faculty, and I'm so proud of our faculty, we continue to bring them from Harvard and Yale and Princeton and across the nation, and someday from Carver Academy. There you go. <laughs> uh, and then you look athletically at where we are, and we're constantly challenging ourselves to get to the next level, and that reflects the moving football to the Big East, it reflects our commitment to those 32 varsity sports, third in the nation in terms of the number of varsity sports, and the fact that our, our young student athletes Despite the many challenges, what we afford them is, is an opportunity to open a book about their lives and to write a chapter in our nation's history that is absolutely priceless. So mm. it's a great privilege for me to sit here next to the <laughs> other Admiral and with you, Byron, to, uh, to talk about what a remarkable school it is that has given for me, it made all the difference. It was the road less traveled, but it's made all the difference. Well said, well said. Well, you know, I, I think, uh, David, you know, it's, it's interesting when you talk about this need to be uh, a person of initiative. Hmm. So let's talk a bit about other initiatives you have underway, just for a second, because I'd like people to know, particularly alumni, uh, that we continue to walk and chew gum, as it turns out. That, uh, <laughs> that initiative doesn't necessarily mean uh, resting on one's laurels. Right. Uh, so you have the Admiral Capital Group. Yes, sir. And um, 
Tell me about that. Tell me what else you got going on. You seem to be a guy who's a little restless and always trying to push those boundaries. Tell me about the Admiral Capital Group. Well, there's really two things kind of come out of that. The Admiral Capital Group is a is it was started because of the Carver Academy. I wanted to have a, a constant source of support. It isn't connected. Carver Academy wasn't connected to a church. wasn't connected to any other organizations. So I wanted to build something on the on the business side that can support the, the social work that we were doing. And uh, so we started a private equity fund. We were raising uh, about $250 million and, and we're buying hotels and, and office buildings across the country and, and uh, it's been very successful so far. So we're having a, a, a great run with that. Uh, but we're basically tithing out of that to um, the initiatives that we have in community. And, and one of the initiatives that was born out of the Admiral Capital Group is the Admiral Center. And that is an uh, initiative where we take other athletes and other entertainers. We have people like Faith Hill and Eva Longoria. We have athletes like Dwayne Wade and Chris Paul. Uh, and we have entertainers like uh, Steve Harvey and uh, Russell Simmons. But those guys who have a real interest in improving their communities, we want to make them true philanthropists. So we, we educate them, we send them, we, we have a, uh, 26 foundations that will help educate them on all of, the, all of the things going on and help to magnify their impact in their communities. So it's, a, it's been an unbelievable uh, uh, effort uh, that we've been able to, Chris Paul wanted to do after school programs. We had the foundations that were doing some of the best after school programs in the country. Uh -huh. So we tied them together. Now in inner central city, uh, New Orleans, we've got four four schools that are supported by 25 community organizations and a beautiful after school program that provides transportation, all kinds of activities, and Chris Paul and JP Morgan get to be the headliners and, and go cheer these kids on. And so it's, it's, been, um, it's been so much fun for, for me to be able to be a part of that. And, uh, and tie people together, which is the power of celebrity. You know, people who may, maybe would have never come together before, now all of a sudden they're sitting in the same room. The, the, the great thoughts over here and the great energy over here and the great influence over here all of a sudden create something special. How about that? Well, that's fantastic. I, you know, again, we talk about leaders to serve the nation. You're going right down the middle of the highway on this <laughs> stuff and I appreciate all that you do. Tell me about your family. Uh, you know, well. you've been a family man and, uh, you know, despite the fact we all went to the Naval Academy, nobody gives you a training manual for how to be a family. Yeah. It's no. an interesting no. process, it's very humbling. <laughs> Tell me about your family and, and where things are today and, and how yeah. your family's doing. Well, my family's amazing. I have a beautiful wife. We've been married for 20 years now. And uh, three children. I have a 19-year-old, a 16, and a 15-year-old. So one's in college already. We've, we've moved him on. And <laughs> two of them eyeballing college. So we're very close to, uh, to the empty nest thing. And I don't know what all those people about, talk about empty nest. I, I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> but they, oh man, no! <laughs> My wife is crying every day now, we, and we only have one out the door already. But it, you know, family life is is beautiful for me, and that's my really. It's been a, a top priority for me, and it, it always will be, no matter what I do. Even even playing basketball, you know, I never wanted to neglect that family time, uh, and and even with a tough schedule. I made sure that I was home as much as I possibly could be. And that's, that's just something as a dad. I mean, you could say what you want to say, but, but nothing replaces time. You have to be there. The boys are, are in games. They're playing football. They're playing basketball. They need me there. So, so I've, fortunately, since retiring, I've been able to have some flexibility with my schedule, and that's a priority in my schedule. Um, it, obviously, there's a lot of other things going on with Carver Academy and Admiral Center and Admiral, Admiral Capital Group. But... But uh, but they remain a priority. So um, I'm I'm having a blast and watching them grow up and and experiencing things through them that I never got to experience. Uh, so th that's it's the joy of my life right now. It's 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 what my legacy is going to be. It would that that's my seed that I'm going to leave out there. So I, I I'm very excited good, about it. Good. Well, it's it's great to hear. And it's it's always good to. And show young people who aspire to be uh, role models mm. that a role model is really a balanced person of morals and, and yeah. family. And so uh, I appreciate the symbol that you represent. Well, I think thank you. you. I think you wear it well.